rock ribbed and ancient as the sun. Mighty mountain ranges mark a rugged course across every continent of the earth. Pr proud are the mountains as they look down from imperial heights. Once when earth was young, they lay prone beneath its surface until tremendous natural forces crushed the subterranean rock strata, cast the huge fragments upward into great piles, lift them far above the plains and valleys, and tore and twisted the earth until it shook and trembled. The story of the uplifting of our mountains is the story of earthquakes. Deep under rugged mountains are strata of rock which once were horizontal. As the interior of the earth cooled and contracted, its outer crust was left too large. It shriveled and cracked along great fault planes. Tremendous lateral pressure slid huge masses along these faults, high above surrounding planes. Then in turn, the process lift was repeated, one after another section of the earth's crust being slid above its neighbor to form mountain ranges thousands of feet in height. While our mountains have thus been growing millions of years, the Earth's skin, even now, continues to shrivel and crack. Imagine these strata are deep in the Earth, of rock, hundreds of feet thick, and you will understand why, when they slip, the Earth trembles. Earthquake vibrations are recorded on this precise seismograph. Light from a lamp is directed to a delicate instrument in which a weight is suspended off-center to be vibrated by an earthquake shock. A permanent magnet damps the motion. As the weight vibrates, it carries with it a small mirror which reflects the light as a moving spot onto photographic paper wrapped around a continuously moving drum. The drum is driven by clockwork, controlled in speed by this governor to within two seconds per day. The sensitivity of this seismograph is illustrated by this record made on it of a Japanese earthquake 5,000 miles away. Earthquake vibrations are complicated. First, waves come directly from the quake source. They vibrate the earth as a loudspeaker, and we hear a low rumble. Then follow strong, low-pitched, destructive oscillations rocking the earth. From the time interval between arrival of these two shocks, scientists deduce the remoteness of the quake. This record of the San Francisco earthquake was made in Siberia. Measurements in all three directions help fix the location of earthquakes. This 300-pound instrument under construction will record the vertical component of Earth's vibration. The Seismological Laboratory of the Carnegie Institution and California Institute of Technology at Pasadena is continually studying earthquakes through records from these seismographs. By thus determining activity of fault, we may eventually learn when and where to expect earthquakes. We find here, for convenience only, a less precise seismograph making a visible record. Straight lines mean no earthquakes, but when the pen moves, why, here's an earthquake now. The record indicates that this was only a small earthquake, which may have cracked the wall of somebody's building, or tumbled down a chimney to leave a gaping hole in somebody's living room. There is no way to predict, predict the exact time of an earthquake. Seismographs are always in operation always poised, ready, day or night, waiting through weeks, months, and years, waiting for a tremor or for a terrific terrestrial convulsion capable of creating an island, of throwing great landslides crashing down mountainsides, or of destroying a city. Always waiting, waiting are these patient instruments, constantly holding delicate mechanical fingers against the pulse of Mother Earth, waiting for the shock which in the same instant that it crumples one building, the city is plunged into chaos. The harmony of life is shattered into a wild discord of
thrown down the frail man-made structures and wrought such havoc that many months of labor will be required to rebuild and to repair the damage. Buildings designed and constructed to withstand merely sun, rain, and wind, and to resist the decay of time, tumble like child's play block houses when the earth twists and rolls. the search for missing persons goes on. Mute evidences of tragedy are discovered among the wastes of home. The final count of the dead and the reports of property damage and destruction always show that the first hysterical news flashes have been greatly exaggerated. It is human nature to magnify disaster. agencies within the stricken area are first to respond. <laughs> Neighboring communities quickly answer the call for aid. The nation sends its forces to protect property and to care for the injured. Buildings which still stand are so badly damaged that men must complete the work of destruction. What wonder that no other phenomenon of nature produces such unreasoning terror as earthquake. Death and destruction compose its history. Near Lisbon in 1750, a terrible earthquake killed 60,000 people in less than two minutes. No point on earth is entirely secure, for this shock was felt over one million square miles. And inland lakes, 1,700 miles away, were set in violent motion. The Indian earthquake of 1897 was felt over an area half the size of Europe. In the Chinese earthquake of 1920, 180,000 perished, while in the Japanese disaster, of 1923, 100,000 people lost their lives when the bottom dropped from Sagami Bay. It is estimated 30,000 earthquakes occur each year, 30,000 warnings of impending catastrophe unless we build our cities well. These men of science work in mysterious ways. Silently, patiently, they analyze and compute from the flexing of a small spring. They calculate what will be the behavior of a tall building should an earthquake tip and sway the walls. Here are three simple models of buildings. Note the marker showing ground motion. Now we are shaking the ground in tune with the natural vibration of the building on the left. Note it vibrates while the others are still. When the rate of vibration is decreased, the center building vibrates alone. See how small a ground movement will produce a large deflection of the building? Then, when the ground is slowly vibrated, the tall building is shaken. Thus, when the natural vibration rate of the building is attuned to that of the oncoming earthquake, disaster comes, 
unless the building is strongly built. If the roof is not well secured to walls, when the walls oscillate, the roof crashes down. Towers and firewalls along the tops of buildings tumble because they are entombed, so to speak, the earth shock. And also, sometimes through impact of a loose roof battering against an adjoining wall. Falling walls cause most of earthquakes death. Good engineering would prevent them. A two-story building shakes violently when the rate of vibration is carefully chosen. It is interesting that powerful earthquake vibrations vary from one-third to ten per second, while the frequency of ordinary buildings is right in this range, from one-half to three per second. Science is here determining the manner of vibration of different floors of a high building during an earthquake. Moving paper tapes record the motion of the individual floors of this nine-story model building. Points of greatest stress are thus located and efficient earthquake resisting construction is made possible. From the past tragedies of human experience is born the knowledge to carry civilization forward. The earth trembles, a building falls. Tragedy stalks among the ruins of a city. A flickering light beam writes the story of death and destruction, which men of science with sorrow in their hearts read and analyze. A vision arises of a city reaching upward, standing, unafraid, against the rumbling terror of the earth.